Alright people, we have a terribly useful skill right here. This is going to be used in any intermediate algebra class, and it's going to be used in your calculus classes. Um, almost all of them. Well, at least the first few. What we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to solve these polynomial inequalities. The game plan for solving polynomial and rational inequalities. Here we go. First, we're gonna factor, then we're gonna find the critical values, then we're gonna test intervals, then we're gonna write a solution set. Okay, I'm cruising up here. I know I wanna factor so that I can find my critical values, so then I can test my critical values. Okay, um, I'm looking for the factors of three that subtract to be two. Are there any? You gotta get that. You gotta get that three and one. X and X. The signs are different and the big one's negative, positive, and it's still all good. Where this is equal, where this is equal, those are gonna be my critical values. Finish him. Um, X is equal to a minus one or a three. If you wanna see how we did that, check out the video on solving polynomial equations. Yes! So now these are my critical values. I'm gonna put my critical values on a number line. This is minus one, and that is three. Tee hee, tee hee. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go through and I wanna check my products. I wanna check my products in between these values. Yes! So I need a number less than one, less than minus one. What's a number less than minus one? How about minus 10? Let's go up here, sure. Minus 10 is going to make this factor positive or negative. It's going to make this factor negative. Minus 10 is going to make this factor positive or negative. It's going to make this factor negative. Yes. Negative times negative is positive in this region below there. Now I need to check this middle region. Zero is a good one. Sure. So I put zero in here. Okay. Zero is going to make this positive. Why? Because it's making it one. I'm not too concerned with the actual retail value of that factor. What I'm looking for is its signage. I'm still checking zero. Yeah, zero up here makes this minus and then a positive times a negative is negative. All function values in between these two critical values are going to be negative, aka below the line. Now I'm up here. Mm -hmm. Sure, a number bigger than three. How about 10? Okay, 10 and one is 11, that's positive. Not concerned about the value. 10 is bigger than three, so this is positive. A positive and a positive are positive. Okay, let's take a look at this, man. What are we looking for? We're looking for where this, which is the same as that, this, expression is bigger than zero. Which numbers are bigger than zero? Positive numbers or negative numbers? Positive numbers are bigger than zero. So then I need minus infinity all the way up to a minus one. We never include infinity, but here because of the equals two, we do include that. Okay, and then we're gonna onion it up with, yes, once again including three because of the or equal to, two, infinity and beyond yeah okay a box and a flower before i move on to the next example let's take a quick peek at why this works this is a parabola opening up who has x intercepts minus one and three, we can see our function is below the line in between these and above the line outside of those, and that's what we're looking for. That's the only time I'm gonna graph it on here. Now, now I'm up here at the top. Yeah. Okay, I'm taking a look at this man. I know I first wanna factor. I see four terms, so I know I'm gonna factor by grouping. <laughs> It appears you want to pull an x square out of there, and then left on the inside, you got an x minus one. Fun. <laughs> pull a nine out? All right. Plus a nine. Left on the inside, you have an x minus one. Fun. You got a common factor. Pull that out. 
Okay. X minus 1. Yeah. And then here, you have x squared plus 9. Fine. And we want to know where that's equal to 0. Okay. Using our zero factor property, we're going to see that x is going to be... Oh, maybe we want to set this one up. x minus 1 is equal to 0. Or x squared plus 9 is equal to 0. Here I see x is 1. That's fun and realistic. Here I have x squared is equal to a minus 9. Oh no! x is going to be plus or minus 3i. That's imaginary, so it doesn't belong on a real number line. It's a critical value, just not a real one. So here I only have one real critical value, and it's at 1. Test the number left of 1. How about 0? Zero? 0 makes this one positive. Or it makes this one negative. Zero makes this one negative. Everything is going to be positive in here. So that one's always positive. So a negative times a positive is going to make this negative. Now to the right of one. To the right of one. Um, how about 10? So we put 10 up in here. Yes. That's going to be positive. We put 10 here. Always positive. Positive and positive are positive. Now we need to regress. We need to go back to the original. I'm looking for the ones that are bigger than zero. Are those the positive ones or is those the negative ones? Them are the positive ones. So this is one, two, infinity, and beyond. Once again, not including one because it's not or equals two. Which brings us up to this next example. Uh huh. Mm. What's the answer? This is the answer. With the flag. Uh oh. Uh, um, I need to factor. So I factor. Oh, way. Um, 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 plus 9. Is this a square of something? X. Is this a square of something? 3. This one times that one. Double it. Is it 6? It's squared and perfect. Square. Yes. So I have x minus 3 squared. That's going to be equal to 0 because I'm trying to find my critical values. I use a square root property, and this is going to be plus or minus 0. So then x minus 3 is nothing. So then x turns out to be 3. And your answer is 3. So now I go and I put my critical value on that number line. So I'm looking. A number less than 3. Um, 0. I put 0 in there. Yes, 0 minus 3 is minus 3 squared is 9. So it's positive over here. I pick a number bigger than 3. How about 10? Yes. So then 10 minus 3 is 7 squared is 49. That's positive also. So now I flash back to my original equation. Where is this smaller than 0? Over here? No. Over here? No. Add 3. This is 0. Hmm. But do I include it? I don't. So this is no solution. a box, and an empty set. Nice.